In this video, we're going to be going over an introduction to chemical reactions. And this is our part 1 video inside of chemistry, chapter 3. So let's get started with this video. So to start things off inside of this chapter, we're going to talk about the roles of chemical reactions in everyday life. And we're going to go over two different examples. So for the first example, when camping, canoeists will cook their food on a propane stove, which is a process that involves combustion reactions that release energy to heat food. So here in this picture, we can see that these canoeists are just traveling and doing their fun. And then here we can see that when they're ready to cook food, then they have this type of a gas stove. And this propane stove basically involves a bunch of combustion, which is a chemical reaction that releases energy to heat their food instead of this pot. So this is one role of chemical reactions inside of everyday life. And moving on to our second one, the second one is inside of trees. So surrounding trees also engage in chemical reactions by using sunlight to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose, which is a process known as photosynthesis. So even trees around us engage in these type of chemical reactions every single day. So this is basically just a kickstart into our new chapter, which is chapter 3. So moving on, now we're going to talk about some critical thinking problems. So for the first question, how do you know a chemical reaction has occurred? For the second one, what symbols and words represent a chemi chemical reaction? And for the third one, why and how do scientists classify different kinds of chemical reactions? So for all these problems, we're going to talk and answer them in the upcoming videos inside of this chapter. But for now, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below just to see what you've got. And moving on, now we're going to talk about actual chemical reactions. So basically, what is a chemical reaction? So chemical reaction is also known as a chemical change, and this occurs when one or more substances change to form different substances. So for example, on the bottom picture here, we can see that once they added another element into one other element, then there is a substance change. So there is a different form of substances that was created. And the same thing for this picture here on the right, the same thing happened. So when they added something else, for example, flames instead of whatever that liquid is, then a new substance was formed. So this is what a chemical reaction is. In summary, it's just when one or more different substances are used to form different substances. So now what is the difference between reactants and products? So the reactants are the substances that undergo the chemical reaction and the products on the other hand are the substances that are formed as a result of the reaction. So for example, if we have carbon and oxygen, when they react, they form carbon dioxide. So C plus O2 makes carbon dioxide, which is CO2. And this is where carbon and oxygen are the reactants because they're the ones that go into the chemical reaction. And then carbon dioxide would be the product because that's the result that we get. So this is the difference between reactants and product. So moving on, how can we recognize chemical reactions? So we're going to take the example of baking soda. So when you mix baking soda with other ingredients to make a cake, for instance, so once you put the all the ingredients inside of the oven and observe, you can see after some time, you can see this cake starting to rise as it starts to cook. And this indicates a chemical reaction. So basically what we're saying here is if you can see a change inside of the substance that's happening, then that could indicate a chemical reaction. So furthermore, the evidence of chemical reactions is where when chemical reactions often involve observable evidence, as we said in the last slide, and that's primarily due to the release of absorption of energy. So basically chemical reactions is when you can see an observable evidence. And some additional indicators of chemical reactions is beyond just energy change, the formation of new substances can also signal a reaction or also identifiable by changes in odor or color. And we're going to talk more about this in the next slide, but these are just some additional indicators that you can see if there is a chemical reaction or not. So furthermore, for how to recognize chemical reactions, here we have a table of some different types of evidence that you can use to see if there was a chemical reaction. And there's also a description to describe each one of them. So for the first evidence, we have energy change. So if you see an energy change, the description for it is all chemical reactions involve a, some sort of change in energy. And the observable changes can include temperature, which is the thermal energy either being absorbed or released. Another one could be the emission of light. 
emission of sound and electrical energy. And the second one is the odor change. So in some chemical reactions, the odor of the product is different from the odor of the reactants. So if you can smell a difference, then you know that there could be a possible chemical reaction. And the third one, there is color change. So in some chemical reactions, the color of the product is different from the color of the reactant. For the fourth one is the formation of gas. So gases are formed in some chemical reactions and this can be observed as bubbles inside of the solution. And finally for the last one, if you, there is a formation of a solid which is otherwise known as a precipitate in the solution. So in some reactions that occur in solution, a solid substance which is a precipitate is formed that is not soluble in the solution resulting in the solid precipitating out of the solution. So these are just some different evidence types that you can use to recognize a chemical reaction. So that summarizes everything for this video, so thank you so much for watching from Try To Be Useful, and we'll see you in our next chemistry video.